I think the thing that makes video games so unique, besides the fact that they are these living, breathing experiences that we get to enjoy every single day on our TVs, is the music that they provide. Video game music is so expansive, really genre defining, genre creating. We obviously use elements of all sorts of different instrumental styles and musical styles in video games, but there really is the sense of freedom that comes with video game music. Video game music is like a giant pizza where every single slice is incredibly different. And sometimes there'll be mushrooms on one slice, and then on the next slice there will be sausage and mushrooms, and then on a slice out of that there's mushrooms, pineapple, and tomatoes. Then there's the meat lover's pizza, which is like all of you who love doom. Anyway, point is, there is no genre when it comes to video game music. And I think that that's why it's so hard to categorize video game music. And that's why it's so easy to put video game music in a box because video game music can't really be tied down. And I think that's why most incredible composers of the 20th and 21st and 22nd and 23rd and whatever century we're in, that's why all the best composers are writing for video games. Because there's a lot of flexibility when it comes to creating beautiful, beautiful, beautiful pieces of music. All in the umbrella that is video games. There's no like, oh, well, it's classical music, therefore it has to be this structure. Sometimes we take all these things and combine them and mesh them and create one big happy medley of things that are satisfying to eat, nourish us, and taste really damn good. And so what I wanted to do in this video today is break down why video games make for the best kind of pizza possible. When I think of classical music, I can't help but think of the greats, Beethoven, Mozart, Brahms. These guys have been writing music, well, they're all dead, for hundreds of years. Mozart is a household name. Beethoven is a household name. But you know who's not a household name and should be? Shusaku Uchiyama, who wrote Salazar's boss theme from Resident Evil 4 Remake. Listen to this. Why is that not classical music? It is, it's just in video games. So it's essentially classical music, but also video game music. So does it need to be categorized? Not necessarily, but it's kind of funny that if you played that in a concert hall, no one would be like, hmm, what is that? Is that even, that's a video game, disgusting. No, they would say, oh, this is classical music. That's crazy. Or what about this? Is that not classical music? It is to me. Then you flip that and you get like something like this. The silk is too fragile to be a threat. Unless you're more fragile than the silk. Case in point. So we just said, hello, classical music. Hello, Vivaldi, how are you today? Oops, I'm gonna do something absolutely crazy with a theme you created in whatever year, 17, blah, 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 blah. Now we take classical music, we throw EDM on it, we say, surprise, mother Now we've got something completely new, a genre redefining idea that takes classical music and combines it with EDM and creates a new genre, something that really can only exist in video games legitimately. Now, of course, that's been done in popular culture. There's no doubt about it, but for whatever reason, when we hear that, we can't help but be elated and be excited. A lot of composers have been doing this, but then also, if you even go further back and you get this. That is the basis of trap music. You understand that? That is trap music beat patterns in a literal Japanese orchestrated piece of music that has the exact same patterns as things that came thousands of years later. So we take instruments from a thousand some odd years ago, throw a trap beat on it, and suddenly we get trance, trap, ancient music. And it's so cool to me, right? But then you flip the script and you go with something like this. That's literally 
the music I grew up listening to that my dad loved. Steely Dan, ZZ Top, The Eagles. This is Chris Crystal Dolo, They Might As Well Be Dead, 2022, Risk of Rain 2, Survivors of the Void. That is genre redefining, or if anything, it's genre borrowing, but made completely personally based on Chris's personal tastes and growth and life. And and, and that's the, uh, the beautiful thing about this, is that we are taking elements of all these different popular culture elements, throwing them into a video game, and somehow the society at large is still saying that, uh, that video games are for kids, and that video games are beeps and boops, and that video game music isn't legitimate. I'm going on a tangent here, but we have to understand that like, this is the reality. This music is so damn good. A whole swath of the population will never even be possibly open-minded to trying this or hearing this. People are dying and never getting the chance to listen to such great music. It's such a bummer. We just went through like 200 years of history. Now all of a sudden we're in the 1970s. We started in the 1800s. That's all in video games. Or I look at Hina Matum from uh, Killer Instinct by Mick Gordon. Like that's, that's, in, that's insane. I've not heard anything like that in popular music. No matter how much metal or hard rock I've listened to, I've never heard traditional Native American flute playing in a hard, heavy metal piece. This song is telling a story. It's about a character. These are the depths that video game music can go. This is another slice of that pie. What an interesting departure from what we just listened to. And it's all under the umbrella of video games and video game music. Or then don't even get me started on the Riot themes. Which one? Take your pick. They're all so individually good on their own. They all cover like every single style or genre. I mean, it's it's absolutely insane. Let, let's listen to um, Cassante's theme. <laughs> My point is just that like video game music has so many opportunities for us to listen to stuff that we don't nor normally hear in popular culture. And I think that's what draws people to video game music. That's what brings people in because they're exploring and having that experience of playing a game and experiencing a character or experiencing a moment in game, hearing a piece of music and then rising up and being like, wow, I can't find anything like this in modern writing. And that's the beauty of the video game music pizza pie. You want something else? Okay, what do you want? Oh, I want like a really chill kind of like relaxed piano piece in a language I don't really understand because I don't really want to like think about what the words mean. I just want it to mean something to me. Okay, well, here's the voice of No Return from Nier. Oh, what's that? You want hardcore EDM that's going to motivate you and inspire you? Okay. What's that? You want 90s pop? Okay, I've got that for you. I mean, it's just insane. It's insane. It's insane how many different genres video games have. And that's something that we really need to keep celebrating, keep advocating for, keep letting the world know that video game music is not just beeps and boops. Video game music is the Wild West. It is the sonic frontier. Wait, no, it's not the sonic front. It's the frontiers of music. And I've only scratched the ever loving surface of what video game music has and how we can benefit from it and how we can expose people to all this variety of music and to be like, yo, it's not just from a video game, it's actually really good. Or you don't even tell them it's from a video game. Just be like, yo, listen to this. Whoa, 
Who's this by? I'm telling you, if you were gonna put Ascension from Final Fantasy 16 in a concert, if you were gonna put any of the FromSoft pieces or any pieces from Monster Hunter, which I didn't even include in this video, people would absolutely be like, oh wow, wow, okay. That's cool. If you were to take the music from Ace Combat 7 and turn it into a modern oratorio, I'm telling you, people would not know the difference. People would not be like, oh, this is terrible. They'd be like, oh, this is like a new composer, Keiki Kobayashi. They must be doing something new, some kind of new oratorio work all about the life and times of Jesus Christ. And then you're like, actually, it's from a video game about fighter planes. They wouldn't believe you. If you were to go and put any of the stuff from League of Legends, or any of the stuff from Honkai Impact 3rd, or any of the stuff from Reverse 1999, if you were to put that on the radio today, people would be like, oh man, who is this? And that's the thing that we have to keep pushing, and the thing that we have to just embrace about video game music, is that we are so lucky, because that pie, any slice you want, baby, you can get it. Anyway. Keep on keeping on. This was a long video praising video game music all the way to the bank. Austin Winery wrote a freaking musical. Go check out your favorite video game music right now. Take some time out of your day. Go listen to some. Relax. Enjoy yourselves. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.